Hi everyone, in this video I am going to show you what are the most important computer science topics for placements. Also this video is a part of my placement rotation playlist which is all about how to crack your dream placement. I will give a link in the description, it will also appear on the corner card. So do check it out and let's get into the video. So computer science topics are actually very important for placements because there's a lot of good companies that ask and test your knowledge on computer science fundamental topics like operating system, computer network, DBMS and OOP. So I'm going to tell you how you can learn the topics, what are the most important topics, I'm going to tell you where you can learn them, the resources you can use and I'm going to tell you how you can master them and have the best shot at clearing your interviews. So let's get into it one by one. I have operating system, computer networks, DBMS and object oriented programming which are four very important computer science fundamental topics. Let's get into them one by one. So buckle up and let's start the video. So first we have operating system which is actually very important. A lot of good companies will test you on your knowledge of operating system. If you go for companies like Google, Amazon, then you'll have some rounds where they might ask you and test your knowledge on operating system. So let's see what are the most important topics and how you can learn them. So first we have the operating system types. What are the types of operating system and the what and the why. What is an operating system? Why is it important? What is its users? You need to know that. So the importance basically what is the importance of having an operating system? The components of an operating system for example kernel, you might have heard that kernel is the heart of the operating system. So you need to know this. Apart from that you need to know multiprocessing and multiprogramming. These are two terms that I was very much confused in in my college days. So make sure that you are not confused between the two. Apart from that you have semaphores and threads. So semaphores and threads are actually very important and interesting topics because they make use of your logic. So it's not just theory and theory but you have a little bit of logic involving semaphores and threads. So it will be interesting for you to learn. Apart from that you have process and memory which is again a little bit of definition, little bit of theory. You can learn that. You have paging and segmentation which is similar and apart from that you come to scheduling algorithms which is very important and it is no longer theory. Now we are on numericals. So I attended the online round of a lot of good companies, product based companies and there were few online rounds where they were asking MCQ numericals based on scheduling algorithms. So you might have heard of scheduling algorithms before like your first come first serve, shortest job first etc. What will happen basically? The numerical will be framed like something like this. Like you have multiple jobs, you have J1 and the time of processing is uh, say P1 suppose 15 seconds or something. Then you have J2, the time of processing in P2 something. And based on the algorithm, you have to calculate the processing time, the completion time, the turnaround time of these jobs in order according to the algorithm. So this is very interesting and you'll be getting numericals in this. Okay, So it's very important that you know this also. Now let me tell you where you can learn all these because these are very important. How can you learn this, where you can learn this. So first resource for you is Geeks for Geeks last minute notes. So Geeks for Geeks last minute notes includes the most important topic of operating system. So this is what you have to do. Go on Google and search operating system last minute notes Geeks for Geeks. Click the first link and you'll have the last minute notes from Geeks for Geeks which have the most important topics of operating system. Apart from that you have Gate Smashes which is a pretty great channel like I was using it a lot during my exams and during my placements and pretty much everyone in my college knew about Gate Smashes and was using his content for placements. So Gate Smashes is a great YouTube channel. Search him up, bookmark him and he explains everything on a whiteboard like this in a very good manner. Apart from that, if you don't want these then you have a cheat code here for learning everything together. There is a cheat code resource which is Geeks for Geeks CIP course which is the Geeks for Geeks complete interpretation course. It is a course from Geeks for Geeks which includes everything for placements, DSA, computer science fundamentals, projects, programming. So it's like a cheat code for everything. So it has the knowledge of everything as well. In case you want, you can take the Geeks for Geeks CIP course. But if you want free resources, then you have last minute notes and you have Gate Smashers, which is a great YouTube channel. And you can learn pretty much everything from here. Focus on these topics, learn them very carefully, practice a lot of numericals and scheduling algorithm and then operating system will be done for. Once you've covered operating system, then the next part for you is computer networks. Computer networks is also very, very, very important. And there's a difference in operating system and computer networks. Let me tell you what that is. 
So when I was in college, I was getting the best grades in operating system. I was getting O O O, meaning 10 C GPA. And in computer networks, I was on the verge of failing. Why is that? Because operating system still has some logic-based problems, still has some numericals, mathematics. But computer networks is purely theoretics. For most of the part, computer networks is pure theory, nothing else. So it's very boring to learn the topics here and learn computer networks. But I'm going to tell you the interesting way, the fun way to learn it. But let's get the topics first. Also, if you go in the interview of some very good companies, like if you go in the company of Uber, Google, Cisco, VMware, then you will surely get some questions from computer network topics. Especially in Cisco and VMware, right? If you go for the interview of Cisco or if you go in the interview of VMware, then 100% you will get asked some networking questions. Cisco gives around 30 LPA and VMware gives around 20 LPA. Both of them are good companies and if you want to crack their interview, you need to be good in computer networks because they themselves are networking company. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first topics are obviously the what and the why, what are computer networks, why do we need them. Apart from that, you have the network types, what are the type of networks, you have LAN, WAN, all these things. You have the topology, like what are the topology, star topology, ring topology. After that you have VPN. So VPN is very important because nowadays a lot of interviews ask on this because VPN is, you know, a very good topic nowadays. For example, a friend of mine went in the interview and the interviewer asked them, like, how do you use VPN? What are the real life use of VPN? How does VPN work? How do you get another IP or those things? How do you hide your IP using VPN? So you'll get a lot of questions on VPN. And look, I already know you're using VPN. So might as well learn how it works. So VPN, make sure that you know the in and outs of it, how it's working. After that, you have OSI layers, very important. Make sure that you know every layer by heart, okay? OSI layers are very important. After that, you have some network devices, just have an overview of that. Then we have HTTP protocol. So this is one interesting part of the computer networks, I would say. So these are questions, the questions that interviewer will ask you will be something like, what happens if? Okay, for example, the interview will ask you what happens if you go to Google and in your browser you type www.youtube.com. Like what will the what will be the message that your browser sends, what will be the message that it will receive, what is the protocol happening behind the scenes. So he might ask you like this. So make sure that you know HTTP protocol and make sure that you know what happens if you send a request like that. Apart from that, you have IPv4 address, IP address, you already know what it is know it a little bit more in depth, then you have some protocol like TCP IP and UDP. <coughs> now, after knowing the topics, like I told you, what is the best way to learn computer networks in a fun and interesting way? To be honest, the best way in my opinion is buy a course on Udemy, okay? So Udemy has some great courses on computer networks, they have some great instructors who teach these topics in a way that it correlates to the real world. So that they, do, they just don't teach the theory, but they teach you the real life application of those theoretical concepts. So it becomes very interesting and you learn it more efficiently. So I would suggest just take a course on Udemy. I'll also mention some good courses in my description, but this is the best way. In case you don't want to go for this and you want free resource, although I would highly suggest this, then again, you can go on YouTube and then you have last minute notes for geeks for geeks on this topic as well. But for computer networks, I would highly suggest just get a course on Udemy. Now, after you learn operating system and computer networks, then the next important thing that you need to learn is DBMS or database management system along with SQL. Now, no matter which company's interview that you go for, if you're going for the backend role, if you're going for a full stack role, then it is must and they will expect that you have a little bit knowledge of databases and SQL because it is very important in your role of backend development. Even if you go for a data analyst role or any data role, you need to have knowledge of databases and SQL. Okay? So, what are the important topics? First, the what and the why. The what and the why are again very important. What is DBMS? Why do we need it? What and the why? After that, you need to have a little bit of uh, basic knowledge of database. What is a database? Schema. What is a schema? Table and attributes, columns, rows, etc. You need to know the basics. After that, one good topic is normalization, which is a little bit complex, but it's a good topic and it is a topic that you can expect some questions in the interview. Apart from that, you have asset properties like atomicity, 
and those things and then you have keys and relationship between the tables so these are the theoretical topics not a lot is there but you can learn this from last minute notes geeks or geeks apart from that you can learn it on youtube as well now the most important part of dbms is actually sql like i said you need to have a good knowledge of sql no matter what interview you're going for if you're going for a back end role if you're going for a data role now I have made an entire video about how to master SQL. I'll give a link in the corner card. You can check that video out. And apart from that, the best way to learn SQL is W3 Schools. This I mentioned in that video also. W3 Schools is the best, best website that you can use for free to learn SQL. So go to w3schools.com and master SQL from beginning. Okay. Now, DBMS is done. The next thing is object-oriented programming. Okay. Object oriented programming is again very important. What are the important topics? You have the what and the why. What is object oriented programming? Why is it important? Why do we need it when we have other options available? Then you have OOP principles, which is extremely important. Like if I tell you, I've sat in the interviews of a lot of companies, and there has not been a single technical interview where I have not been asked what are the four pillars of OOP or some question related to that. So the four pillars of object oriented programming are very, very, very important. Learn them by heart and understand them to the core. Like what are the four pillars, how they are applied, what they are. Okay, learn them fully. Apart from that, you have the difference between object oriented programming and structured programming. Like if you have a structured programming language like C, if you have object oriented programming language like Java, what are the differences? Which is preferential? So you can learn the differences. After that, you have some basic concepts like overloading and overriding. So the theoretical topics you can learn again from Geeks for Geeks, they have full articles on OOP. But I would suggest rather than focusing on the theory, focus more on the practicality of it. So what is object oriented programming? It is programming. So you have some languages like C, which has structured program, which is a structured programming language. Then you have languages like Java, Python, which are object oriented, right? So either learn Java or learn Python, C++ is also there, but I would suggest either learn Java or Python. And in that too, I would suggest learn Java. And while learning Java, you'll understand the OOP concepts practically. And you won't have to focus on theory. The best way to learn Java is Telusco. So Telusco is a great YouTube channel. He's on YouTube, you can watch his videos for free. Great YouTube channel that you can use to master object unit programming and learn Java. Apart from that, you have Java T point. Java D point also you can use, you have tutorials point, these also you can use to master Java and Python. And don't worry, all the resources that I'm mentioning, the link to all of these will be in the description box. You don't need to keep track of anything. But all in all, these are the subjects and in these subjects, these are the topics that you absolutely need to learn in order to have the best shot at clearing your placements because like I mentioned, a lot of good companies will be asking you these things in your interviews. So, note these down, go to the resources, learn them, and all the best for your next interview. Let's see you in the next video. Thank you.